one of the surprising feats of Vietnam is its military. Vietnam has a huge military, composed of a top-notch navy, a wide array of aerial fighters to a huge standing army. The World Bank and its latest data even shown that Vietnam is one of the highest military spenders as a percentage of its GDP in Asia-Pacific. Vietnam has a higher spending when compared to the Philippines, Indonesia, and the United Kingdom, Australia, China, Malaysia, and a long list of other countries. In dollars, this is about 5.5 billion US dollars in 2018, which is 8.1% of total government spending, and 2.3% of its GDP. By 2023, it was also reported that Vietnam had allocated approximately $6.6 .6 billion for its defense, and is further expected to grow to a massive $8.5 billion by 2027. To see just how vital the country's defense sector has become, one can simply look at its navy, where its submarines thrive. Vietnam is one of the few developing countries that has emerged with a state-of-the-art submarine fleet. These ensure the protection of its maritime borders and significantly enhance its strategic position in the region. This is even more necessary in China's absurd claim of the South China Sea. Vietnam's submarines are equipped with advanced technology, which acts as a deterrent against potential threats and also demonstrates Vietnam's commitment to safeguarding its territorial integrity and maritime interests. But the question here isn't merely about Vietnam's possession of submarines, but rather just how strong it is. Can these submarines actually defend the country from foreign threats, or are they just for show? It should even be noted that Vietnam is still a developing country. Spending billions of dollars for a submarine is a huge burden for the country's economy. It could have spent that billion dollars to construct infrastructure, or build the country's technology. Yet the government chose a world-class submarine. So, was it even worth acquiring such a luxury? To understand all these, let us first take a step back and discuss the country's submarine fleet. Vietnam's modern submarines began in December of 2009 when Vietnam signed a $2 billion contract with Russia for six kilo-class diesel-electric submarines. This deal was one of the largest in the history of Russian naval equipment exports and included trading programs for Vietnamese crew members in Russia. The first of these submarines, named HQ-182 Hanoi, was delivered to Vietnam in 2013, marking the establishment of a modern submarine fleet in the country. The subsequent submarines were named after major Vietnamese cities and important port locations, including Ho Chi Minh City, Haiphong, Da Nang, Hana Hao, and Ba Ring Vong Tao. These submarines were constructed at the Admiralty Verify Shipyard in St. Petersburg, Russia, a facility renowned for building over 300 submarines, including nuclear ones over its 313-year history. The construction of the first submarine in the series began in August of 2010 and took two years to complete. The submarine successfully completed over 100 trial journeys with 53 officers and crew members who underwent months of training in Russia. The remaining submarines were built and launched over the next four years. Besides this, Vietnam has also been investigating in submarine rescue capabilities. On May 24th, Vietnam held a key laying ceremony for its first submarine rescue vessel named MSSARS-9316. This vessel, constructed by Z-189, a shipyard company under the Defense Ministry, measures 93 meters in length and will feature an on-deck helipad and a positioning system for operation in harsh weather conditions. The MSS ARS-9316 is intended for a range of uses, including international submarine rescue operations, underwater surveying, seafloor mapping, and ocean research. Now, it is also important to know that Vietnam also had submarines prior to the Kilo class, they once operated the Hugo-class mini-submarines from North Korea in 1997. This transaction was part of a Guns for Rice barter. These submarines were stationed at Cameron Bay for repair and overhaul. However, for many years, there was uncertainty about their operational status. It was not until January 2010 that their existence and operational status were publicly acknowledged, revealing Vietnam's secret submarine service, M96. Then, in 2002, Vietnam approached India for submarine training which led to India starting training programs for Vietnamese naval cadets and officers in 2006. Presently, India is offering training on submarine escape procedures to the Vietnamese Navy. By 2008, they tried to acquire conventional submarines from Serbia, but were unsuccessful. This led to the Russian submarines. Now, let us discuss the specific details of the submarines. The Russian submarines were called Project 636 Kilo Class, and were called by the US Navy as Black Hole for its quietness. What Vietnam acquired, however, was the improved version. The improved Kilo submarine measures 73.8 meters, 242 feet in length, 9.9 meters, 32.4 feet in width, and has a draft of 6.2 meters, 20.34 feet. 
Its surface displacement is 2,350 tons, and it is capable of diving up to a quarter of a mile deep. This submarine model is equipped with diesel-electric engines. It boasts a range of 9,650 kilometers, 5,996 miles, and can cover 700 kilometers, 434 miles underwater at a quiet speed of 2.7 knots, 5 kilometers per hour. The top speed of the Kilo is 20 knots, 37 kilometers per hour. The crew complement for the improved Kilo is 57 members. The Project 636 MV submarine is equipped with six 533mm forward torpedo tubes, capable of holding 18 torpedoes, 6 in the tubes and 12 on racks, or 24 mines, 2 per tube and 12 on racks. Among these, two torpedo tubes are specifically designed for launching remote-controlled torpedoes with high precision. Additionally, the improved Kilo class can launch anti-ship cruise missiles from its torpedo tubes and is equipped with Strela-3 man-pads anti-aircraft missiles. Now, the initial deal had a cost estimate of just $1.8 to $2.1 billion. However, the cost, as reported in 2013, had escalated to over $3.2 billion. This increase was attributed to additional costs for armaments and infrastructure development. Industry insiders have reported that Vietnam's Kilo submarines are likely to be armed with either 53 to 56 or test 76 heavy torpedoes. There is also speculation that these submarines will be outfitted with anti-ship missiles like the 3M-54E or 3M-54E1. In July 2011, Oleg Azizov, representing Rosoboro Export, confirmed that Vietnam would receive the Novetra Club-S SSN-27 anti-ship cruise missile, which boasts a range of 300 kilometers. So, are Vietnam's submarines really strong? It is, after all, very expensive and is equipped with world-class armaments. It is also a lot. Six submarines is a big number in the face of Southeast Asia. So, is its fleet capable of fending off foreign threats? Well, in terms of regional context, having six of these submarines does place Vietnam in a relatively strong position compared to many of its Southeast Asian neighbors. However, to go against China is really a different aspect. It is also crucial to know that in a naval standoff, it is not just submarines that are needed. The entire military, from Air Force to Navy and ground forces, will be in the work. But, for pure speculation purposes and entertainment, one can still compare China and Vietnam submarines. These submarines are likely intended more for deterrence and defense rather than for engaging in a major naval power like China directly. Their primary role would be to protect Vietnam's territorial waters and interests, particularly in the South China Sea, rather than to project power. Furthermore, the role of submarines in warfare is well suited for covert missions. They could be used to disrupt supply lines, gather intelligence, and create strategic challenges for the Chinese Navy. A standoff is rather not really likely. However, compared to Southeast Asian peers, Vietnam stands out. Before Vietnam's acquisition of Kilo submarines, other Southeast Asian navies had obtained smaller numbers of submarines. Despite recent purchases, Indonesia and Malaysia still face capability shortfalls due to their vast maritime territories. These are, however, changing. By 2024, Indonesia had plans to operate three Shangbogo class submarines from Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering, along with three additional Kilo class submarines from Russia. The Royal Malaysian Navy has been operating two Scorpion class submarines since 2009, while the Singaporean Navy plans to phase out two of its Challenger class submarines and replace them with Type 218 SG diesel electric submarines from Tyson Krupp Marine Systems by 2020. As maritime disputes escalate tensions in the region, more countries, including Thailand and the Philippines, intend to join the submarine club. But anyway, do let us know what you think down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.